Moving on to the next spider, we are going to tackle the spider walker. So let's go here into the sprites and enemy sprites. And over here, we have the spider walker. Of course, for him as well, we need to go here and create, you know, set the sprite mode to multiple, hit the ply, go over here and slice him up. I'm going to S him up. Now over here, one thing that it is being sliced, I don't know what this is, probably something from the image or whatever. I don't know, this part we need to delete. So there you go and hit apply so that that change applies to the, you know, sprite sheet. There we go. So over here, we have our spider walker. Here he is and he is too large. So I'm going to resize him to 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. And I am going to call him over here spider walker without the underscore zero on him. We are going to attach the animator component. So animator, search for it. We're also going to attach a box collider. So box collider 2D, let me just go over here and change it a little bit. So something like this, something like this. When I say change it, I mean resize it. Something like this can do, there you go. And probably over here as well, and voila. We are going to leave him as not being a trigger, so meaning a solid body. We're also going to tag him with the enemy tag. And from here, I'm also going to attach a rigid body 2D and make sure that we freeze the Z rotation or otherwise he's going to, you know, do some acrobatic stuff and fall down and all of the good stuff. So let's go quickly inside of the animations and enemy animations and right click and create a new folder for the spider walker animations. And he's a walker like from the walking dead, you know, the zombie spider, because you can see he is a little bit weird. So I'm going to call this controller the spider walker controller. There you go. And attach this bad boy on the animator. So let's go over here and attach it on the animator. So the next step is to go here in the animation tab and create the animation. So this is going to be our walk. So simply call it walk because there is only one animation for this spider walker. And select all the frames over here. So from zero up to 13, select all of the frames and simply drag and drop them over here. Let me just preview that quickly to see is he, yeah, he is walking like a mad person. So from here, I am going to set the sample rate to 24, but he is still walking like a crazy person. If we go over here, there you go, like a crazy person. So I'm probably going to hit the play button, probably going to, I am going to hit the play button. And from here, I am going to select his walk animation. And I don't know, let's set that to 0.6 and let's see how that looks like. Yep, 0.6, maybe, maybe 0.5. No, 0.6 is definitely the way to go. Maybe 5.5, but that is up to you. You can experiment with that and so on and so forth. What if I tell you that I have more tutorials with better explanations and a more comprehensive guide to game development than this one that you're following? Sounds interesting? Well, that's my Game Development Academy. And inside, I have more than 80 courses and more than 500 hours of content for you to learn Unity game development, Unreal Engine game development, and everything in between. Click the link below and check it out. So what I'm going to do now is go over here. I am going to move the player somewhere around here because we want to test out the spider walker. It's not, the player is not important over here. So the first way how we are going to move the spider walker and for that we do need to create a script because I'm going to show you two ways how we are going to do it. The first one over here, I am going to call this one spider walker and we are going to attach this script on him. The first way is we are going to utilize the ground check by using array cast. So let me just show you what I mean by that. By first, I need to, you know, do my thing and all of the good stuff because you know i'm singing to you when i do these things so yeah you know you know the drill so over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a private sprite renderer that i'm going to call sprite ren and next we're also going to have a private ground check so over here we're going to have a private game object ground check position actually this is going to be a transform not a game object now i'm also going to show you another way how we can get a reference to this by using a child so over here i'm going to also say a private layer and this one is going to be our ground layer there you go and last but not least, we are going to have a private raycast hit 
2D that I'm going to call ground hit, voila. So we do need to get a reference to the ground check, but before we, you know, get a reference to the ground check, we need to create the ground check, which is basically going to be an empty game object that, I'm, that I am going to place. So right click and this is going to be our ground check position. And it actually has one S, not multiple S's. And I'm going to move this somewhere around here. So there you go, something around here can do come on there you go voila let me just take here tag him so that we can see okay this is exactly where i want it to be so there we go it is a little bit in front of the spider walker but that is totally fine because it needs to detect the ground and that is again totally totally fine so what is the first way how we can do this well, first we need to handle the ground checking. And in order to handle the ground check, let me go back here inside of the script and we're going to create void check for ground. And this is going to check for the ground. And for that, we're simply going to say our ground hit is going to be equal to physics, not physics material, but physics to the raycast dot raycast. And we're going to raycast from the ground check position, that position. And by the way, we did not get that reference. So quickly over here, first the sprite render. So sprite render is equal to get component sprite. So it's sprite render component. There you go, like that. And for the ground check, we're going to say transform the get child, and we're going to get the child at the zeroth index. This will work because we only have one child. If I go back over here, we only have one child, which is the ground check position, and they are placed inside of or under the game object like an array. So the first element here is at index zero. This one is at index one, then index two, three, four, you get the points, but we don't need them all. We only need one. So this one is at the zero index so from here we can say ground check that position or actually excuse me this is the ground check position and now the direction so it's vector two down so come on dot down there you go the length of that ray is 0.1 and we're checking for the ground layer so there you go not ground check but the ground layer let me just copy it and there you go. So now we have autocomplete. So over here, we're going to test if we don't have the ground hit. So if we don't have a ground, basically we are not hitting the ground, then we are going to have a variable that we are going to use to determine when and how we are going to move. So over here, we're going to have a private float. This one is going to be move speed by default that is equal to 5F. And I'm going to set that also to be a serialized field because you know, why not? We can change the speed however we want to change it. Over here, we're going to have a private bool move left. This is going to determine if we are going to move left or right. And this is the value that we are going to change if we are not on the ground. So over here, we're simply going to say move left is equal to the opposite of move left. And notice the exclamation mark that I added. So this is basically going to set the move left to be the opposite value of the current move left, which basically means if move left is currently true, then this is going to make it the opposite, which is false. And there you go. If it's false, it will make it the opposite, which is true. And again, there you go. So what is the next step to do? Well, over here, I'm going to create void handle walking with ground check. So handle walking with ground check. And over here, we're going to check for the ground. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here temp, but for that, we do need to create a temporary position variable, which again, if you remember, I talked about that. So over here, I'm going to create a private float, actually vector. So private vector three, temp position. We're also going to create a private vector three, and this one is going to be the temp scale. And we're going to have a private float scale X value. 
we will come to all of this why and how i'm doing this and why am i using all of this and so on and so forth do not worry about that at all because it is going to be very very interesting some of these examples that we are going to see so over here we're going to say temp position is equal to transform that position and then from there we are going to simply check if we are moving to the left side so moving to the left, that means that the temporary position dot X minus equals the move speed multiplied with time dot delta time. So this is if we are moving, if we are moving to the left side. If we are not moving to the left side, that means we are moving to the right, else we are moving to the right side, then our temp position X is going to be plus equals so going here plus equals and last but not least our transform position is equal to the temp position also don't forget to flip the spider walker so over here we can use our sprite ren dot flip x it can be move left not move speed but move left if we are moving left we are going to flip it if we are not moving left we are going to not flip it and that's that so over here inside of the update function we are going to call handle walking with ground check and over here we're going to say check for ground so it's this right here and there you go so what i did here this ground hit well basically it returns as you can see array cast hit 2d so this right here will return array cast hit 2d and i simply grab it over here so i'm setting ground hit to be equal to this over here it's the same explanation same exact thing what we did for the player when we test it if we are on the ground so over here physics ray cast and there you go ground check position and there you go so over here vector 2 down we are going in the down direction this is the length of the ray and we're checking to collide with game objects who are on the ground layer if we are not on the ground so this will return true notice the exclamation mark i'm testing here if we don't have a ground basically if we did not collide with the ground then we are going to switch or say move left is equal to the opposite of move left over here also what we can do inside of our awake after we get these references we can say our move left is going to be equal to random dot range between zero and two and if that is greater than zero question mark true otherwise false what the hell is this teacher i don't understand well this is equivalent to writing if random range between zero and two if that is greater than zero then we can say move left is equal to true so instead of typing like that we can type it like this over here and over here of course you would say something like else move left is false so else move left is false but the default value of a boolean is always false so we don't need to do that at all but a shortcut for instead of writing all of, all of this it's this right here i believe this is called a ternary operator i'm not sure i'm not good with names i don't care i know what it's doing so essentially it is asking here with a question mark so it is asking if this value is greater than this value question mark if that is you know if it's greater then we're going to use true call on then we're going to use false so if this right here is true we're going to use true as a value otherwise we're going to use false and there you go so this is explained and over here basic things that we're doing so nothing complicated nothing hard at all you get the point you see what this here is so voila this is everything you know that we have so temp position there you go transform that position sprite render flip the x and so on and so forth you get the point getting here the position subtracting from it if we're going to the left side adding to it if we're going to the right side reassigning it back here flipping the sprite so essentially the idea over here is the following i'm going to add the so i'm going to set the spider walker over here and the spider walker is going to go so he is going to start walking on the ground and I'm going to take the ground and the spider walker somewhere around here because I'm going to take this ground and resize it just a little bit more. There you go. And this is the spider walker. So he is going to go when he reaches here. Look at that. This ground check position is going to be here and it's not going to cast here. It's not going to detect that we are on the ground, which means then we're going to start and flip the movement. So move left 
or yeah, move left is not going to be here and he's going to move. Let's try it out and see the first problem that we are going to get. So there you go, look at that. You see what is going on? First things first, did I set here? No, the ground layer needs to be set. So I need to set the ground layer to the ground. But notice now what is going to happen. If I hit the play button, pay attention. Look at that. You see here? There you go, we're flipping. But we do have one problem. And that is, what if I take this ground check and move it a little bit here? So it's a little bit away from the player. So let's try it out now and see if it will actually work. Look at that. What the hell is this teacher? I don't understand, look at that. Why did the spider not move? What is wrong? Well, the problem here is because we're flipping. Look at that, I'm going to pause the game and select the spider walker. So now he's moving and when he gets to this point over here, he now needs to flip. Look at that. But look at that ground check is over here. You see what is the problem? You see where the ground check, the spider walker is here, but the ground check is here. So the solution for this case is not to flip the, because if we flip him, look at that. If we flip him and to show you what I mean, I'm going to tag the ground check. If I flip him, he is still standing in the same position. But if I change the scale to negative and positive, you see the ground detect object child is moving or rotating along with the spider. So this is the point. So essentially over here, it's not a good idea to use the flip. Instead, and what did I do? So over here, we're going to remove this. Instead, we're going to say here, the temp scale is equal to your transform dot local scale. And over here, you see over here, for our temp scale, we're simply going to set that to the negative value. But in order to set it to a negative value, we do need to go over here and use this scale X value. And from here, when I set the move left, I'm going to say scale X value is equal to transform dot local scale dot X. This is going to give me the local scale value. So over here, I am going to say now the, the temp scale dot X is equal to negative of the scale value and over here I'm going to say it's equal to the positive of the scale x value and last but not least over here we're going to say transform dot local scale is equal to temp scale which is simply going to return the scale because for this case as you saw flipping the sprite will not do its thing because the ground detect game object stays in the same place but if I hit the play button right now you will notice look at that so now, let me just also set the speed of the movement to three and going over here. You see, he is rotating or, you know, moving along with the, with the spider. So over here, I'm going to say three and set the ground check somewhere around here, a little bit closer to the spider and hitting the play button. Now, the spider is facing the correct direction. So left and right, he is facing those directions, as you can see. And he is, of course, going into that direction. And of course, we don't have problems as we had before. So as you can see, sometimes you do need to use the scale in order to rotate the game object left and right, because people always complain, why don't you use flip x it's much easier yes it is but depending on what you want to do same as you see in this example this is not the place where you're going to use the flip x now this is it for this video i'm going to go into the enemy prefabs and i'm going to put this over here we have one more way because i'm going to show you two ways how we can move the spider because there are multiple ways how we can do this and solve problems and so on and so forth if something is not clear here or here make sure that you ask in the comment down below and uh, yeah i believe that's it as an assignment i will leave you i didn't plan to do it but i can leave you an assignment you can try to do something on your own for the movement instead of doing this try to do something else and I'm not talking about using the rigid body and velocity to move it but actually another way or give him a waypoint where he can move and so on and so forth and we can talk about that in the next video so just comment it on the next video or even below this one so again something's not clear ask I will answer I will see you in next video